Hello Airsoft friends and welcome to this video today where today we're taking a look at the Novrich SSR90. Now I have already taken it out of the box and if you click the link that's up there you can go check out the unboxing and see all of the cool things that Novrich sent me with the SSR90. Now like I just said Novrich did send this to me along with like the accessories like the red dot, the low profile rail. But I am going to be straight up with it, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to let you know where this thing shines and also where improvements could be made as well. Because if we didn't say where improvements would get made then no improvements would ever be made and I actually did have a lot of fun with this and I think that this is a great little riff it's got a lot of potential too I have got some plans for what I'd like to do with it going forward so yeah stick around until the end of the video to see what those are so the SSR 90 as you can tell is a P90 style riff which means it's got its magazine that goes on the top there and it's got a ball pup design so the BBs actually feed into the hop unit here and then the barrel is the full length from this bit here to this bit here. And the great thing about that means you've got a decent sized barrel in a very small form factor. Like with this, I have to have the M-Lock extension rail over the top so I can fit my cameras on for when I record gameplays. However, if you didn't have that on, this would be such a small SMG, such a small riff that you could literally kind of like get around any corner and not have any problems with it at all. Your muzzle's not gonna be poking out around a doorway and kind of like people looking at that and seeing that and like knowing where you are. So the fact that that isn't gonna be something that happens is a big plus. It's also a very good weight and very very comfortable to hold one-handed like this because all of the weight really is in the stock of the rifle. In here you've got where the battery is, you've got where the motor is, the gearbox, all of that kind of like heavy metal stuff is all at the bottom of the rift whereas the top front bit even though you have got like a big old metally bit up here which I presume is going to be like CNC aluminium weight wise is very much at the back which means that you can genuinely heave it around the airsoft site like this and that's exactly how I was running around last weekend and I was finding that movability or mobility even was very easy very quick and it didn't take as much kind of like energy and strain as it would usually do if I was running something like the TK45 there by KWA. Even my Mod 1 to be fair because I still kind of like when I run with it I have to kind of hold it with um, at the front and also at the back whereas with this it literally is just one arm operation running and that was very comfortable. Now my one does look a little bit different to the normal usually you would have charging handles up here but I actually removed those just because they don't do anything functional on the rift they're more aesthetic and I found that when I was kind of like moving the rift you would hear them shake and that was something which I didn't really like so I actually just removed the charging handle very easily and again that video is going to be coming out soon so make sure you like and subscribe to this one so you don't miss that one when it goes out because you may want to do those things to your SSR 90 as well. I found quite a few kind of like positives from removing the charge handle like for example having the M-Lock rail here or even if I didn't have the M-Lock extension rail my thumb fits on there very positively very nicely. I remember seeing in Joseph's video where he likes to put his kind of like thumb here and for me that wasn't as comfortable everyone's personal preference is a little bit different but for me I really enjoyed actually holding it here and putting my thumb on that and having that as a thumb stop and I felt that that was just so much more comfortable and a much more of a positive experience for me as well now this is the more powerful of the two versions available and when I got it for me it was too hot so here in the UK we have an AEG limit of 1.14 joules so the spring had to come out because I was firing at about 1.5 so I found an older spring that I had put that in there and then that brought me to about 1.1 joules which is exactly where I like to be because if you go higher than that and you get like some inconsistencies on the day then sometimes the sights can be a little bit funny and not let you play with it so yeah I, I was happy where that was it was just like an old random spring that I had and uh, yeah I was perfectly on limit there now the trigger on the SSR 90 is a little bit of a special one now with a regular riff you just got the straight up you pull the trigger it fires once and then that's it whereas with the trigger on the SSR 90 it's actually got a double kind of like feature similarly to an org if you've ever used an org so it's one pull there like that will give you a single shot and then if you pull it all the way it then goes on to full auto and I wasn't sure how I was going to like this when I was playing like like on the day but you know what I actually really enjoyed it and the reason being is like I found myself just leaving it on like the full auto setting and I was easily able just to like ping at people and then I'd get to the point where if I was like trying to ping through a bush or something and the person like just, just wasn't calling hit because either I wasn't hitting them or they were being a little bit sneaky, most likely I wasn't hitting them because I was shooting them through a bush and there's lots of sticks and leaves and things. You literally can then just go, sod this. And it's so much fun. And especially for just like a straight out the box riff, not having to do any upgrades to it or anything like that, having that kind of rate of fire, oh, mwah. It is so bloody nice. While we're talking about the trigger, I must say I actually really enjoyed the responsiveness of it. It felt really snappy. Out of the box, it doesn't have any pre-cocking on there, but you can program it using the gun itself by holding the trigger down. Vibrations come up, sounds come up, and then you can like, you know, set your level of pre-cocking. You can set it to be a binary trigger as well. So you fire then and you fire when you release it too. And I will do a video just looking specifically at that. So if you do want to get the SSR 90 and you want to know 
how to program it, then that's going to be a video for you. So make sure you like this video and drop a subscribe as well so you don't miss out on that. And why not turn on notifications and then you definitely won't miss out on that. For me, when I ran it, I didn't actually change any of the settings because by default, it comes from the factory on like the lowest pre-cocking setting. But to be fair for me, I actually really enjoyed it. It felt really snappy even on, on that setting there. Since then though, I have reprogrammed it and I've put it on the middle pre-cocking setting. Tried the highest pre-cocking setting and it just wasn't something comfortable to me. But I was the exact same on that than I was with my Crytac there because I've got a Titan in there. When I run that with pre-cocking on like the highest setting, again, something about it just didn't feel natural for me. I like a bit of pre-cocking, but not a ton of pre-cocking, but that's my job, that's just my own personal preference. So now I've got my SSI 90 set to three on the pre-cocking scale, which is right in the middle. So it gives you a nice amount of pre-cocking and it definitely does feel a little bit snappier. God, it looks so weird without having the magazine in. Let me put the magazine in there. Now here I am using the low profile adapter. You Usually you would have um, like the big old bridgy bit here, which means you wouldn't have to use the riser with the red dot sight. But I actually want to have as minimal things on the P90 as possible because then if there's more stuff on there, it's bigger, it's bulkier, it means it's going to more get in the way. And I want this to be as small and as compact as possible. I'd only have on here what I actually need when I'm playing airsoft. The only thing I found with the low profile conversion kit, which was a little bit naff, is that it's harder for me to now reseat magazines. Now this is exactly, you know, a, a me problem. This isn't like something which the guys over at which can really fix easily because you've taken the bridge off because you don't really necessarily need it that means that square that you have put the magazine through which seats it and kind of makes sure it goes in the right place every single time nice and easily is now not there that's because of my life choices so now instead of kind of like putting it through the back i kind of come in here put it in a, at an angle and then I can just lock it down and hit it down just like so. And that's something which my muscle memory will get used to. It will improve, it will get better and I will get faster at seating magazines into the rift. It's not that bad anyway, you know, it's kind of like quite quick and easy to get used to. If you're in a high pressure situation though and you're kind of like trying to put a mag in and it's kind of like going here all over the place, you just kind of like take a moment, take a breath, put it in there nice and slowly and then you're ready to go and kick some ass. Speaking of the magazines, the one that came with this one is by far the best P90 magazine that I have ever had the pleasure of using. Now, like I said, this was the first time I've ever taken a P90 out into the field, but in order to make sure that I could, you know, give you information on what is the best magazine out there to try, because apparently P90s have a bit of a reputation within the airsoft community as having some of the worst mags available, and I must admit, this is 100% the case. These are all of the magazines that I uh, that I got and I ran with. I even dropped one on the floor there as well. Come back. He's so embarrassed about his own performance. These are the four magazines that I got to run with the SSR90. And this one here, which is a double bell high cap, I think it's 280 to 350 rounds, kind of worked okay on semi, but on full auto, all of them were rubbish, apart from this one. But this is a 60 round mid cap magazine. My personal preference is to get a load of the 100 round mid cap magazines and run those with it. This is a JG high cap, a non-translucent one. This is the JG high cap that came uh, with my JG P90. So yeah, if you are looking to get the SSR 90, make sure you put a load of these mags into your basket at the same time. So you're not gonna be running around reloading that one magazine all the time, which is what I then decided to do because these were just a bloody nightmare. Now there are other brands of magazines out there too. I am dedicated to trying to find the best magazine and another video I'll do in future is kind of like putting them all together, putting them all to the test, showing you doing like live firing shooting with them so you can see for yourself which one performs the best and which ones you may want to pick up. So again, drop us a like, subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss that video coming up. Now coming to batteries, I am an 11.1 volt LiPo kind of guy and I was recommended by Chris himself to use the 11.1 volt LiPo in this. So I put one in there and it was really, really good. How many rounds per second with the SSR90? 25.5. The rate of fire was fast and there was quite a few guys who were like interested in it. So I just kind of gave it to them, let them do some shooting with it. And when they pulled the trigger for full auto, it was like that instant smile on their face, which was, you know, I loved it, they loved it. And we just had a bit of a giggle about it too. Fucking hell. One of the cool things though about the MOSFET that's in here is I actually forgot to take the battery out. Yeah, I know. It's something which I try not to do as much as possible, but every now and again, I'll accidentally leave a battery in a rift. It'll be completely dead and I'll usually need to buy a brand new battery. However, with this one here, the MOSFET has got a low voltage warning. So it was doing like a little vibratory soundy beepy thing. And I was literally in here earlier, but then all of a sudden I could just hear a 
And I was walking around trying to figure out what it was, where that sound was coming from, and it was the MOSFET here letting me know the battery was at a low voltage. So I was able to get it out, put it on to charge, and now that battery is nice and safe. It's got a full charge in it, and that can just sit there and wait until the next game day. So yeah, very happy with the MOSFET. I'm really happy that it's got that low voltage detector because that literally just kind of like saved me 20 quid on buying a new battery. So yeah, thank you very much for that. Good job. Another thing that a lot of people had questions about the Rift when I was out there playing at the weekend was my camera setup. Now my camera setup, I try and keep it as simple and as easy to use as possible. I use two Run Cam Scope Cam 2s. I've got the 25mm on the top there and I've got the 3.6mm here and I'm using that as a face cam. And even though it seems like it's really close, that allows me to get a decent amount of my body and head in when I'm going around and playing. I found that this setup works so well. It's very, very nifty. They last all day. You don't need to put an external battery on them. You don't have to of wires coming off them or anything like that just make sure they're fully charged and you will be good to go i am planning with project airsoft to build a load of kind of like cool accessories that upgrade parts for this as well one of them uh which is actually kind of not for the ssr 90 but it's instead for the suppressor is i'm working on a barrel stabilizer which is almost done it's in the final kind of like stages here which actually fits inside the novridge suppressor so if you do want to have uh, a longer barrel like sticking through there like so what you'd be able to do is put this little barrel stabilizer inside the suppressor and then your barrel is going to be nice and stabilized and centralized so it's no not like wobbling through when it's uh, just floating in the suppressor so yeah that is a cheeky little thing that's coming out if it's done by the time the video goes live then there'll be a link in the description for you to check out this cheeky little thing specifically for the ssr 90 i have got some really cool ideas of uh, of items that i want to make for it so again watch this space make sure you subscribe to the project airsoft youtube channel as well linked in the description below because any new product launches will have videos with them and you can check them out straight away if you're subscribed there it was so much fun to run on the weekend and it was one of those riffs where you know it, it was an eye turner like people would go oh my god you're running a p90 and then i'd be like no it's actually the novel ssr 90 and they were like oh my god no way that's amazing and again like putting it into people's hands letting them kind of get hands on touching it having a little look and also more importantly pulling the magic trigger which was just sending a mad amount of bbs down range that was something that everyone was getting a kick out of like the performance of that the RPS is just so, so fun. And I must admit, I had a whale of a time. The gameplay from that game day will be coming out at some point in the near future too. I just need to get that in the edit, get that sorted out and then put that live. Big shout out to all my patrons for supporting the channel month on month. You guys are awesome. And I'm very appreciative and thankful for each and every one of you. And a big shout out, of course, to Novrich for sending the SSR 90 to me with all the accessories and to the Stay For Shoot Airsoft community Discord server. If you're looking for some Airsoft friends, give them a join. There's a link in the description below. And until next time, thank you. Thank you very much for watching this video. Remember to call your hits and I'll see you in the next one.